Hello, today we're gonna to look at lesson 7.4 on factoring polynomials using GCF. GCF stands for greatest common factor. The essential question that we'll be answering in this lesson is how is factoring a polynomial similar to factoring integers? The skills that we learned in 7.3 with using the divisibility rules to find the factors are gonna be used a lot in this lesson when we factor polynomials using the greatest common factor. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna to begin today by reviewing greatest common factor. I'm sure you've heard of this before. Greatest common factor, which we abbreviate as GCF, is the largest number that divides evenly into two or more numbers. So it's the largest factor that two numbers have in common. To find the greatest common factor of two numbers, you can look at all of the factor pairs and find the greatest number that is a factor of both your two numbers. So let's look at an example here with finding the greatest common factor of 12 and 30. The first step is just to list all the factors of 12 and all the factors of 30. And remember that factors always come in pairs just like we practiced in lesson 7.3. So I'm gonna start with my factors of 12, beginning with one times 12, then two times six, and then three times four. Those are all the factor pairs of 12 because there are no numbers between three and four um, that are factors of 12. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with 30. For factors of 30, I'm gonna go ahead and list those starting with one, 1 times 30 is 30, 2 times 15 is 30, 3 times 10 is 30, 4 doesn't go into 30, it doesn't divide evenly, but 5 goes into 30 6 times. 5 times 6 makes 30. So there are all your factor pairs of 30. Now to determine the greatest common factor, you just need to find the largest number that's in common in your two lists. So the biggest number that is a factor of both. Okay, I'm gonna start over here. My biggest number is 12. Well, 12 isn't a factor of 30. My next biggest number is six. Notice that six is also a factor of 30. So six is the greatest common factor. And we would say that the GCF is equal to six. So now that we know how to find the greatest common factor of numbers, we can use that same skill to find the greatest common factor of the terms of a polynomial. Here's a polynomial, 12x to the fifth plus 8x to the fourth minus 6x to the third. The first step of finding the greatest common factor is to find the greatest common factor of the coefficients. Remember that coefficients just means the numbers that are in front of the variables. So here we have three coefficients, 12, 8, and 6. Here's a little trick for finding the greatest common factor. It's helpful to look at the number that has the least number of factors. So when we look at 12, 8, and 6, of those numbers, the one with the least amount of factors would either be the 8 or the 6. Those both only have two factor pairs. I'm gonna look at six. So let's list all the factor pairs of six. One times six is six, or two times three is six. Now, you just need to find the biggest number that is also a factor of eight and 12. So in the list, I'm gonna start with the biggest number, six. Six is a factor of 12, because two times 12 makes six, but six is not a factor of eight. Then the next biggest number is three. Three is a factor of 12. Three times four makes 12, but three is not a factor of eight. Eight divided by three doesn't divide evenly. So the next biggest number is a two. Now two is gonna be a factor of 12 because 12 ends in an even digit. It's also a factor of eight. So the greatest common factor of the numbers is just the two. Now we have to find the greatest common factor for the variables of each term. Notice that my first term is x to the fifth. Remember what that means. x to the fifth means x times itself five times. 
So that's x times x times x times x times x. Then the next term is x to the fourth, which is x times itself four times. And then the final term is x to the third, which is x times itself three times. We're looking for the greatest common factor. So how many x's do each of those terms share in common? Well, it can't be five because this term doesn't have five x's, neither does this one. It can't be four either. But three works. All of the terms have at least three x's. So the greatest common factor is x to the third for the variables. And that's just because all of the terms have x times x times x in common. So there's a little shortcut that you can use so you don't have to write this out every single time. The GCF of the variables will always be the smallest exponent on the variables. So I'd recommend that you add that little note to your notes packet. The GCF of the variables is always the smallest exponent. Well, now we just have to put our two pieces together. The GCF of the coefficients was two, and the greatest common factor of the variables was x to the third. So our answer for the greatest common factor of the terms would be two x to the third. So that is the final answer for the GCF of the terms. Let's practice a few more questions now with that shortcut that the GCF for the variables will always be the smallest exponent. I want to do try now number one together with you. Try now number one is a little bit different because you'll see that the first term is 15x squared, but the second term is just 18. For the GCF of the numbers, we need the greatest common factor that's a factor of both 15 and 18. We need to list out the factor pairs. I'm going to list out the factor pairs of 15 because 15 only has two factor pairs, either 1 times 15 or 3 times 5. Of those factors, the greatest common factor that is also a factor of 18 would be 3 because the 15 doesn't go into 18 and 5 doesn't divide into 18 either, but 3 goes into 18 six times. So the greatest common factor is three. Now for the variables, it has to be how many x's each term has in common. The first term has x to the second, but the last term doesn't have any x's. So unless all the terms have x's, you can't factor out a GCF of an x. Here the GCF is just equal to three. You can't have an x in the GCF because 18 doesn't have an x. You might want to add that to your notes. The GCF is just the number 3 because you can't factor out an x because that last term, 18, doesn't have one. Number 2, you should be able to factor out both a number and a variable. Go ahead and try that one on your own. Please pause the video. Here's your answer. Your greatest common factor should be 6x squared. 6 is the greatest common factor of the numbers, and then each term has x squared in common. Remember, it's always the smallest exponent on your variable, so that would be the x to the second. So now that we've practiced finding the greatest common factor, we're going to practice using the greatest common factor to factor out a polynomial. Why is it helpful to factor out the greatest common factor from a polynomial? Well, I wrote the answer here, and you can pause your video to copy that down. Basically, what it does is when you factor out a greatest common factor from a polynomial, you get a polynomial with either smaller coefficients or smaller exponents on the variable, and this is going to make it easier to analyze or to factor further. The rest of Chapter 7 is going to be all about factoring. So we'll find that when we factor, the first step is to check if there's a greatest common factor, because if we can factor out a greatest common factor, we get a polynomial that might be easier to factor further. So let's practice that with this first example. The directions say to factor out the greatest common factor from each polynomial. The first step is to determine what the GCF is for the polynomial. 
Look at the coefficients first. We have a 4 and we have a 12. Well, 4 goes into 12 evenly. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So our greatest common factor of the numbers is 4. Now for the variables, the last term doesn't have a variable. It's just a number. So the greatest common factor is just the number 4. You can't include a variable with it unless all of the terms have a variable. So now when we factor out the GCF, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put the GCF outside of the parentheses. Okay, so GCF goes right there. Then we want to figure out what's left after we divide out the greatest common factor. To get that, you can either divide each term by the greatest common factor, or you can think about like multiplying in reverse. So I want it to be 4x. 4 times what makes 4x? Well, I just need an x. Or 4 divided by 4 would be 1. 1x one is the same as x. For 12, think about 4 times what makes 12. Well, I know that's 4 times 3, and I need the minus sign in the middle. Okay, you could also get that by just dividing by 4. Well, now our factored form appears to be 4 times x minus 3. The GCF is on the outside of the parentheses, and then we're left with x minus 3. That's a smaller polynomial, smaller coefficients. To check your answer, you can distribute back through. Factoring is just the opposite of multiplying. So if you redistribute and you multiply this through and you take, you know, 4 times x and then 4 times 3, you should end up with back what you started with, 4x minus 12. That matches what we started with, which means we factored it correctly. Let's go ahead and write out the steps that we just used to factor out the greatest common factor from a polynomial. All right, so here are the steps that we just used. I'd recommend pausing the video and writing these steps down in your notes packet. The first step was just to find the greatest common factor of the terms. Here it was four. Then you put the greatest common factor outside the parentheses and figure out what's left when you divide out the GCF. You can either divide each term by the greatest common factor, or you can kind of think about like, for the first term, I need it to multiply to 4x, so that's 4 times x. For the second term, I need it to multiply to negative 12. That's 4 times negative 3. So you can either divide out the GCF, or you can kind of think about multiplying backwards. Then the last step is just to check your answer by distributing. When you distribute it back through, you should end up with what you started with, which in this case is 4x minus 12. Let's try one more example together here. And problem B is a little bit trickier. Notice that the first number is a negative number. Okay, when the first term is negative, you want to factor out a negative in your greatest common factor. I'd recommend that you add that to your notes. When you're finding the greatest common factor, you can still just look at the factors of the positive number, but then we'll just add a negative sign to it. So of my numbers, we have 12, 18, and 27. Okay, you can look at factor pairs of any of those things, but it's helpful if you find the one that has the fewest number of factors. I know that 12 has three factor pairs. 18 also has three factor pairs, but 27 only has two factor pairs. So I'm going to list the factor pairs of 27. 1 times 27, or 3 times 9. Now, of the numbers, let's find the biggest number that's also a factor of 18 and 12. 27 is not going to work. Neither is 9. 9 is a factor of 18, but 9 is not a factor of 12. So let's try the next biggest one, which is 3. Now, 3 goes into 12 four times, and 3 goes into 18 six times. So the greatest common factor of the numbers is 3. Remember that we're going to add a negative to that, because since the first term is negative, it's helpful if you factor out a negative. So I'm going to use negative 3. And then don't forget about the variables. Here we have x to the third, x squared, and x. All of the terms have an x in common. So your greatest common factor is negative 3x. Remember that the GCF always goes outside the parentheses. Then you want to figure out what's left over. So to do that, you have two options. You can either divide each term by negative 3x, or you can kind of think about multiplying in reverse. 
Okay, it's like, what multiplies with negative 3x to get us back to negative 12x to the third? Well, we need a positive 4 because negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. And then we have 1x outside. So that means I need 2x's left over here. x times x to the second gets us back to x to the third. Now, it would also work if you divided each term by negative 3x. When you divide, you just take away one of the x's. So the x on the bottom can cancel out 1x on the top. Then for my next term, same thing. Think about in reverse, what multiplies to a positive 18 with a negative 3? Well, 3 times 6 is 18, but to get back to a positive, we need a negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18. Then we have 1x outside, so that means I need 1x left inside. It's like we're dividing by negative 3x. Dividing by the negative 3 gives me the negative 6. Dividing out the x takes away one of the x's on the top. So now it's just negative 6x. And then for our last term, a negative 27x divided by a negative 3x, that's a positive 9. And again, to check it, if you just go negative 3x times 9, that gets us back to negative 27x. So this appears to be the answer. I'm going to check it quick just by distributing. So kind of re-multiply that negative 3x, distribute it through. So we've got negative 3x times 4x squared. That's negative 12x to the third. Then negative 3x times negative 6x, that's positive 18x to the second. And then negative 3x times positive 9 is negative 27x. That matches what we started with, which means that is correct. I know factoring out the greatest common factor from a polynomial is kind of tricky at first. So there's four try now problems. I want to do number one and number two together with you for two additional examples. And then you can try number three and number four all by yourself. Number one is a little different from the others. See how the first term doesn't have a number in front of it? It's just x to the third. Well, it's like a one x to the third. But if there's no number in front of the variable, we can't factor out any numbers. So our greatest common factor here is just the variable. Remember, it's always the smallest exponent on the variable. So here, the greatest common factor is just an x. Put an x outside your parentheses now, and let's figure out what's left over. Remember, it's like we're dividing each term by x. So if I have x to the third, and I divide out an x, now I have x squared. We take away one of the x's, so there's two left over. 5x squared, if I divide out the x, that's 5x. And 22x, if we divide out the x, you're just left with the 22. So that right there is your final answer for your factored form. Remember, you can double check if you distribute it back through. x times x squared makes x to the third. x times 5x makes 5x squared. And x times negative 22 makes negative 22x. So it works. For the second one, we have an 18, a 6, and a 24. Let's start with the numbers. I'm going to list out my factor pairs of 6. 1 times 6, or 2 times 3. Now let's find the biggest number there that's also a factor of 18 and 24. I'm going to start with 6. Well, 6 goes into 18 three times. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So the greatest common factor of the numbers is 6. For the variables, find the number, the smallest exponent. So x to the second. And that's your greatest common factor. So now to figure out what's left over, think about like multiplying in reverse. So if I have 6x squared as my greatest common factor, it has to multiply back to 18x to the fourth. Well, 6 times 3 makes 18. So we have a 3 left. We have two x's outside, we need to get up to the four, so we have x squared. Then for six, we don't need a number, that's just a one, but we need another x. Six x squared, when you times that with x, you get up to six x to the third. And then finally, you would do six times four to make 24. So I'm gonna have a plus four on the end, 
We don't need any x's with that one because the x squared is already covered in our greatest common factor. You'll see if you distribute that through, you end up right back where you started. So you know your answer is correct if you double check it by redistributing it through, you should end up right back where you started. Now go ahead and try these two try now problems on your own. Please pause the video now and give these problems a try. For the next two try now problems, I'd like you to try these all by yourself. Go ahead and pause the video now and give question three and question four a try. When you hit play again, I'll have the answers posted. Please pause the video. All right, here are your answers. For number three, the greatest common factor was 3x squared. So I have that on the outside of my parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, you should have x squared minus 3x plus 4. Notice again how that greatest common factor, the GCF of the numbers 3, 9, and 12, they're all divisible by 3. So we have a 3 for the number. And then it's the smallest exponent on the variable, which is the x to the second. Then to find what's left over, you're dividing each number by three and you're taking away two of the x's. So you're essentially, you know, dividing all of the terms by three x squared, divide the numbers by three, take away two of the x's and you're left with that. For the other one, number four, the greatest common factor is five x. We can only factor out one x because that last term has just an x with it. And then you're left with x to the fourth plus seven x squared plus 10. The last type of problem that we're gonna see in this lesson is how to factor out a common factor when there's more than one variable. Okay, notice this expression. This polynomial is three x to the third y minus 12 x y to the third. When there's more than one variable, factor out the greatest common factor of the numbers and the smallest exponent on each of the variables. I'd recommend that you maybe pause the video quick and copy that down. When there's more than one variable, factor out the greatest common factor of the numbers and the smallest exponent on each of the variables. So let's start with the greatest common factor of the numbers. We have a three and we have a 12. Well, three divides into 12. So our greatest common factor is gonna be three something. Now for the variables, look at the X and look at the Y. The first term has X to the third, the second term only has one x, which is the same as x to the first. We need the smaller exponent, so that's x to the first, or just an x. For the y, the first term has a y, the second term has y to the third. We can only take out a y because both terms have a y in common. So now 3xy is the greatest common factor. Put that outside your parentheses and let's see what's left over. I like to think of what multiplies back with this to get back to 3x to the third, y to the first. Remember, we have one of the x's outside here and one of the y's. So to multiply back to three, I just need a one. And then to get up to x to the third, we have an x to the first out here. We need two more x's, so that's x to the second. The y to the first is already covered in the greatest common factor. Then for the next term, we can do the same thing. Three times the negative four will make the negative 12. The x to the first is covered out here in the greatest common factor. I have y to the first out here, but I need y to the third. That means we have two y's left over. So we have four y to the second in here, and that's your final answer. Take away all the exponents that are ones. So your final answer would be written as three xy times, and then one x squared is the same as just x squared. So I have x squared minus four y squared, and that's your final answer. Remember that you can always check your final answer by distributing it back through. And if you multiply these back through, you should end up right back where you started. 3x to the third y minus, I'm doing three times negative four, so that's negative 12, and then x, and then y to the third. So it matches what I started with, which means we factored it correctly. You can also think of just taking each term and you're dividing it by 3xy. So you divide the numbers and you take away one of the x's and one of the y's. That will also leave you with the same answer here. Here's our final example for this lesson. 
Again, we have two variables. There's an x and there's a y. So let's factor 50x squared minus 32y squared. Let's start with the greatest common factor of the numbers. It might help to list out the factor pairs. I'm going to list the pairs of 30. 1 times 32, 2 times 16, and 4 times 8. Now of those numbers, we want to find the biggest number that's also a factor of 50. 32 doesn't work. That's not a factor of 50. Neither is 16. 50 divided by 16 doesn't divide nicely. 8 is also not a factor of 50. So let's try 4. Well, 50 divided by 4 doesn't divide nicely either. But 50 does divide by 2. So our greatest common factor of the numbers is 2. Now for the variables, notice that the first term has x squared and the second term has y squared. But they don't have any letters in common. So our GCF is just the number 2. You can't factor out any x's or y's because both terms do not share any x's or y's in common. And remember, to be part of the greatest common factor, it has to be a factor of all of the terms. My first term has x to the second, but my second term has y to the second. There's no variable that they both share in common, so our greatest common factor is just going to be a 2. That means we put a 2 outside our parentheses, and then to figure out what's left over, just think about what multiplies with 2 to get back to 50. That'd be 25, and then I need my x squared. You're really just dividing each of the terms by 2. So we have 25x squared minus 16y squared, and that's your final answer for the factors. Check your answer. If you redistribute that back through, 2 times the 25x squared gets us back to 50x squared, and 2 times negative 16y squared gets us back to negative 32y squared, which means that answer is correct. And that concludes Lesson 7.4. Thanks for watching, and good luck as you try some problems on your own. Bye.